Hey, what's wrong, Meow-chan? Is that all? Gonna go to bed like a little girl? Oh my god, he's now doing the full opposite of what he has been doing before. <laughs> oh no, he's gonna... He's gonna fuck up again. Jaden, you're such a lovable idiot. Holy shit. Shut up. I'm a... Man! <laughs> Ma'am? <laughs> whack, whack, bam, bam, bam. The two of them were in the training room ring, punching each other while wearing gloves and headgear. Apparently, they'd been at it for a while. Both of them were covered in sweat. Oh god, is this gonna turn into a weird situation? I see. Like Stan said. Stan? It's not Stan, right? Since it's Stanislav. Oh, fuck me. Is that my... <laughs> I'm not even fucking using my controller right now. Um, like Stan said, the best way for boys to restore the friendship is a good dash of fatigue and the release of their fighting instincts. Don't underestimate me just because I'm short and I look girly and I look like I'm really fragile and my shoulders are not very broad, you know, but you asshole, you asshole. Damn it, my gloves are too heavy. Isn't this too much of a handicap? If you start losing, are you gonna blame your gloves? Even your excuses are super genius class. Ah, damn it, this tiny brat's so full of himself. I wish he was full of me. Okay, I will really punch you. Beat the crap out of you. Ah! S stop it, Jaden. Huh? Meow? Gotcha! Oh, no, that's, uh, that's an underhanded tactic. <laughs> Pretending you're the girl he loves. To make him stop throwing punches, you know? That's... That's very cowardly, actually. <laughs> Bang! A cross counter. Oh, it would have been if Meow's arm were a bit longer. Jaden's left straight had... Oh, Jaden's left straight had beautifully lined up on Meow's face. But as usual, Meow's right straight hadn't been long enough to reach. Oh, God. With a funk, Meow fell spread eagle to the ground. What's he gonna do now? Damn it. Get me a saw. A chainsaw. I'm cutting this right arm off. You're making it even shorter. <laughs> I'll turn it into a rocket fist. Okay. I'm not gonna fall for that, Meow. I've already memorized the difference between how you and Meow talk. Oh. Oh, really? I'm so happy for you. Pig's nose. <laughs> if you're that worried about your flimsy body, I'll train you like they do in the Navy. But don't start crying, okay? Wait, what do they do in the Navy? I, I don't know. And if Meow starts crying from the muscle pain, how are you gonna take responsibility? Oh god, no, not that thing about responsibility again. I'll gently massage it until she gets better. But I won't do it for you, Meow. You can go rub Indomethacin lotion on it all by your lonely self. <laughs> Damn it, I'll train. I'll train like hell. I'll definitely protect Meow from beasts like you. It's your partner, isn't he? How dare you call him a beast? There's no point treating this kind of dumbass like a human. How can you say that about the partner who's done so much for you? Stupid big brother, you dummy. Ow, ow, don't pinch me. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Jaden, keep training big brother, okay? The truth is, he's feeling a bit relieved right now and he's grateful. Sure, leave it to me. I dedicate this victory to you, meow. For thanks. Oh god, this is... This is mighty awkward. <laughs> That's Japan for you, <laughs> yeah. The only thing missing is them just getting suddenly naked, I guess. I've never thought I'd see a romantic comedy comic strip from the 20th century play out in real life. I'm jealous. Oh, me, me too, actually, me too. I mean, imagine wanting to frick your training partner and best friend. Isn't that the best? That would be the best possible solution for everyone involved. Cheery man. Hey, senor! Toshiro, how have you been? Well, you're enthusiastic as I'd expect from a Latin American country. Someone might think we've been close friends for a decade. I forgot Toshiro's voice, so he's gonna get a stock standard one. I didn't think I'd ever see you again alive! <laughs> This was Lato Brazil. In the A3 world, anyone picturing a resort would think of Latin America. 
That's very nice. They fully embraced the, uh, I guess, um, tourist aspect or something. Latin America had managed to preserve the most beautiful of environments and air quality, as well as gorgeous vistas, making it a vacation destination for VIPs across the world. I actually don't know much about Latin America now that I think about it. Is the air quality there especially good or something? It would be no exaggeration to say that spending the rest of one's life in a high-class Latin American resort was the ultimate goal of many. Oh. The countries on the South American continent, which was the only one that had spirit fields of high purity rare spirits in, were considered the most prosperous in the world. They were paradise nations, a fifth faction, which managed to maintain favorable relationships with all factions in a world where the other four factions were always quarreling. At a glance, it was hard to imagine what connection there might be between Tojiro, who was well dressed despite the seed and pulling a wheeled bag behind him, and this man, who looked like he lived every day to the fullest in casual clothes. I especially like the cheery music, by the way. <laughs> it's so unfitting for... Uh, well, I guess other Ryokishi games also had kind of cheery music, but still, <laughs> this is something new and fresh. The pair entered the lobby of the high-class hotel, where the cheery man was staying and relaxed on an expensive sofa. Tujiru, you should quit your business too and come over to Lato. It's great here, just have a leave. Sadly, I don't have the kind of vast wealth you need to apply for immigration into Lato. Just go make friends with the big-breasted, big-ass girls on that beach over there. If you marry into their family, that'll get you your citizenship. <laughs> oh god. All Lato girls dream of falling in love with foreign billionaires. That explains all those strangely appraising looks I got on the beach. Well, I've, I'd say Toshiro is a pretty good looking man. He's middle aged for sure, but usually for, for men that's not really a problem, right? Women are in the eye of the public supposed to look young and stuff, but I think middle aged women are fine as well. I mean, every age bracket um, has its charms, right? While someone young might look incredibly fresh and beautiful, um, certain people just pull off that mature look very well. Both female and male, in my opinion. I've got good eyes. One look at the material of my clothes and they knew I wasn't rich enough to be worth talking to. Aww. <laughs> you really are a hoot, Toshiro. <laughs> Oh god. <clears throat> Wahaha, well, ha, indeed. The hotel bar was filled with relaxed Latin music that would satisfy the heart of any hard-boiled man. After the two men brought their glasses together, they silently enjoyed the atmosphere and their drinks for a while. I could listen to that, yeah. In an area where you could say things with your brain, it was customary to refrain from speaking anything but your orders in places where silence was treasured. Oh, okay. So each of the guests experienced the place in their own ways, and they were able to enjoy their conversations without interfering with anyone. That's so weird though, because sometimes when you're in a bar, I guess the general chatter adds to the atmosphere as well. It can definitely be too loud, you know, you, some bars are so loud because they don't really have any separations, any wall in between tables that you you can't really hold the conversation very well, but other times it just feels like it adds to the feeling of, of social interaction, right? It adds to the sense of community. You're in a big group and you're doing something. Even if you don't know the people around you, you still, like... I don't know. I don't know how to explain. I think you get what I mean, though. Um, let's see. How is it for Tojiro? So, were you able to play that musical score? That was one hell of a score you found. I doubt there are even five people in the world who could perform that. But I'm glad one of those five people owes me a favor. After all, a score is just a piece of paper if no one can perform it. You've received 13 data items for you. Still, where on earth did you find this? These are ADMS blueprints. Each one was an environmental ADMS blueprint maintained by nationally supported businesses from various countries. Now showing a preview of 13 items for you. So it seems. Only a few organizations manage ADMS blueprints. And they are all supposed to be government supported and tightly controlled by their countries. How did you get these? Who knows? It's a business secret. ADMS. Also called Amos. Oh, okay. Amos. 
Its official name was the 8 Million System. It was a system of environmental nanomachines developed by the Yaoyorosu nanotech firm in B3W Japan. The ADMS had self-replicated repeatedly, eventually filling the atmosphere all over the planet. Oh. This groundbreaking system was capable of doing all sorts of things when instructed. It was almost like an OS that had been installed into the environment itself. Wow. That's very cyberpunk. Its uses included communication, obviously, but also purification of the air and water, reduction of ultraviolet rays, medical applications, and, eventually, military applications as well. Its initial development had proceeded quickly, but scientists fearful of grey goo had kicked off a worldwide anti-nanomachine campaign, so it was kept from the light of day for a long time. However, when World War III ended, the world was faced with the prospect of imminent extinction. A nuclear winter had begun, starting the countdown to the world's end. While the political debate over its use was still ongoing, the ADMS had been distributed across the whole world and it... Okay, fuck that. I, I fucking officially hate my goddamn fucking controller. It's just going on without me pressing anything. Fuck me. Stop it. It's my... It's... It's the triggers. The triggers don't stand in, in default position anymore, they're, they're just sending signals all the time. I might have to unplug them if it goes on like that. God damn it. Um, across the whole world and it began purifying the atmosphere. As a result, the globe did not freeze over. The countless gods known as ADMS filled the air, raising the curtain on a new world. Sorry for that interruption, by the way. Just as oxygen and nitrogen had existed in the atmosphere, so too did ADMS now exist. AMS. Of course, it existed in all regions of the world, but it also existed as, as high as the stratosphere and as low as the bottom of the ocean. Wow. And naturally, it was inside the human body as well. So there's no way to get rid of it now. That's what you tried to tell me, right? Some had worried that knowledge of strange nanomachines filling everything from the atmosphere to people's bodies would trigger humanity's nanomachine allergy once again. All A3W governments hit this fact but some scientists eventually made it public. The masses, knowing that nanomachines had been put into their bodies without their knowledge, and fearing that some sort of accident or malicious act might lead to tragedy, flew into a panic. For several decades it was used as a magic word by certain kinds of paranoids, conspiracy theorists, and newscasters, one that was used to explain all sorts of unpleasant unknown things. I'm sorry I hit you, it was the nanomachines, son. However, a hundred years had passed since then without anything major happening. Uh, we all know, if a hundred years pass without anything major happening, it's fine. And nothing bad will happen in the future. No, why, sh why should we be worried about nanomachines being in every living being on the world, or all around us, with quite possibly someone being able to control them in a way or another? Why would I be worried about that? No, I'm not. The generation afflicted by nanomachine allergies came and went. Nanomachines infected the entire planet, and a phobia of grey goo turning everything else into nanomachines was now viewed as a complete joke. It was just... Mm. Pardon me. It was just like in the 20th century, when some people thought that letting off an H-bomb would cause a chain reaction with all the hydrogen on the planet and destroy the world. It's quite different to that, I would say. <laughs> that opinion was also viewed as a com complete joke later on. Yeah, but it doesn't have anything to do with the fucking nanomachines, son. Now, no one thought much of the fact that countless nanomachines drifted throughout the atmosphere and their bodies. Nanomachines aside, humanity had always coexisted with all sorts of bacteria and viruses. And so, a murderous ADMS was simply added to the list of things an evil terrorist might develop in a spy novel, alongside nukes and killer viruses. Nukes are real though, killer viruses are also real. Of course, it isn't actually that simple. In the first place, developing ADMS requires cutting-edge research facilities and human resources, as well as a massive budget. Only the major countries from each faction are capable of that. And it's managed by the IPMA, and all countries observe each other's work. You couldn't possibly develop a malicious ADMS. Could you now? Well, that's true enough. Still, if that's the case, what on earth was she thinking? He thinking? The guy who got his hands on this heavily compressed file? Maybe he's a super hacker who somehow thought he could sell it for money. So he's both a super genius who can get into the super secure ADMS management service and a total moron who actually thinks he could make a profit off of it? 
several ADMS blueprints were shared between ADMS research facilities across all the world's factions under the management of the IPMA. So pre-existing ADMS blueprints were something all factions already had. Even if this hacker had retrieved it so some terrorists could start developing a malicious ADMS, they wouldn't be able to get their hands on the facilities or human resources necessary for such development, making the whole thing pointless. What if suddenly one of the countries goes rogue? They have the knowledge, they can just not care about the IPMA and not observing them anymore and not controlling them anymore, and in a span of like, what amount of time could they turn this thing into a killer virus to basically genocide everyone else? <clears throat> I mean, those are nanomachines, they should be smart enough to distinguish between like, the racial genetics of who is from which country or something, you know? Just to put it, just to make it easy like that. Maybe they can even distinguish between borders or something, I don't know. This seems very, very dangerous, to be honest, and I can't join in in their carelessness. Though the blueprints were managed quite carefully, they weren't worth, worth any money. It was like stealing semiconductor techniques that had already been pat patented, okay? Those were already public knowledge in the semiconductor industry, and even if someone outside the industry found blueprints for the, those techniques, they wouldn't do them any good at home or at the dinner table. I wonder what the guy who stole this was thinking. Well, this is just a theory of mine, but one of the blueprints is called Artemis. A water purification ADMS. That was a registered trademark of ACR, South Africa's state-managed ADMS program. There's also System Akura, PalPal102 and Einzijam. Or Einzijam, I guess. Those are air purification ADMS from La to Argentina, um, COU Singapore, and COU Saudi Arabia. There was a lot more, but they were all ADMS blueprints related to atmospheric improvement. In other words, some mysterious terrorist wants to take advantage of that to create some kind of environment destroying ADMS. And then they'll use that to launch a massive attack on the world's food producing regions, triggering a world panic? Nice. Forsyth would have loved this stuff. Water and air are essential to human life. If we lose those, we're screwed. I'll bet the terrorists are jealous of Lato's beautiful paradise and are planning to destroy it. <laughs> but you're still talking about a dream, right? Every lab on Earth is under close observation. There doesn't exist an institution anywhere that could develop something like an environment destroying ADMS. Maybe. But, you know what, Tojiro? Even if it was impossible for every lab on Earth, a secret lab beneath the Earth might be a different story, right? Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> My Kizuna translates your Portuguese weird sometimes. Ah, I'm so sorry, Tojiro. Looks like my next appointment has arrived. Mind if I include the bill from here as part of my fee? That explains why you were going for the expensive stuff. Obrigado. Até logo. I don't know if I pronounced that right, I'm sorry. The cheery man left the bar with the same cheeriness he had had when he first appeared. Now that the energetic man was gone, Tojiro was finally able to slowly soak in the bar's atmosphere. There is still some chatter, okay, I guess. Then the scent of a passionate perfume hit his nose. I bet it's gestures. An attractive Brazilian woman had sat down in the seat vacated by the cheery man. Okay, okay, no, it's not gestures then. She's not Brazilian, is she? <clears throat> Tojiro raised his glass and winked at her. Wow. You're quite a player. <laughs> Hi there, young lady. Would you care for a drink? Oh, it's the referee. It's um, Valentina. <laughs> Gladly. Now, what shall I have? It's funny that they are not really competing, isn't it? That they are like the refs? It gives them some kind of outside position where they could just interfere in a whole other way, I think. How about a milkshake? As laid back as Lato is, it's probably not a good idea to drink alcohol on the job. By this point, she wasn't alone. Several MPs from the Lato military were with her too. Oh? 
Welcome to Lato Brazil, senor. If you had told us you were coming, we could have given you a proper welcome. Well, now that I know there's a beauty like you here to welcome me, I'll do that next time. His Excellency has said he wishes to invite you to dinner. That's not a real invitation if you have to bring your, your fucks, you know. Will you come with us? Works for me. If you'll be joining us in an evening dress, that is. Oh, yes. All of my fucking yes. Look, I have many yes in my pockets. Take them. <laughs> Senor says he'll gladly come with us. Sergeant, take his baggage. And see if any of his luggage has arrived at the room he was supposed to be spending the night in. Nice, just what I'd expect from a resort country. The service here is great. Toshiro set his empty glass on the counter and calmly stood up. The MPs walked right next to him on either side. Did they, like, notice that he was selling state secrets or something? What is Toshiro doing? Where's his fucking Egyptian goddess? What's going on? To fulfill our master's orders, we shall not hesitate to use the methods of demons, not to stain our hands with demonic acts. Oath of the Order of Prometheus. Okay. Which chapter am I in now? Any indication? <clears throat> the doomsday clock advanced. Alright. Guess we're getting ever closer to midnight, to the red moon. Which is not good, I think. Former Prime Minister Saden of ACR Libya was reported to have died of an illness last week, but according to a recent leak, he actually died to do a, due to a gunshot wound. This has led to a massive uproar in that country. Our former Prime Minister, a leader of peace and democracy, was killed by the ACR royal family. Africa must not fall back into a dark age. We request humanitarian military support from the ABN military to protect the people of Africa. ACR Royal Family Press Secretary Rafini said this measure was taken because making any announcement before the investigation concluded might have led to a panic, in effect confirming the leak. This crime was committed by secret agents of the ABN Guidance Department, which has always challenged the harmony of the African continent. A male and a female member of the ABN involved with this assassination have already been arrested, and we have asked that the International Criminal Police Department issue an official notice regarding four other participants. The ABN Department of Friendship, the equi equivalent to a Ministry of Foreign Affairs, has expressed a deep regret at these comments and... Ah, just now, ABN Pakistan's mining machines all started operating at once. The suspension of the Kashmir Spirit Field dispute, which both the ABN and the CUU supposedly agreed to, is now over. Ever since the disputed Kashmir region was found to contain a large-scale spirit field, the ABN and the COU have each publicly encouraged the other to show self-restraint, while simultaneously claiming that they themselves ought to possess the Kashmir region. This issue has been suspended for quite some time, but it seems that the moment has finally come for them to clash openly. The foreign ministers of COU China and COU India have both released statements. They're harshly criticizing the ABN, saying that the breach of the agreement by resuming mining operations will not be tolerated and that they must bear responsibility for whatever happens next. Ah, oh, shit is going down because of the greed of people. You sow the seed and you reap the death. World news has suddenly gotten so exciting. <laughs> is the information overload making you old people lose your minds? Is she literally going... What's going on, you boomers, here? <laughs> it would count as information if this was news, but it isn't news to us. After all, when they announce the news, they're just reading our manuscript aloud for us. Precisely. All is in the name of guiding humanity down the right path. <laughs> However, the Kashmir region isn't the only spirit field problem the COU has. There's also the Glass Sea of Japan. The vast Glass Sea that separates COU Japan and AOU Japan has been maintained by both countries as a symbol of peace and a world war relic, and they've attempted to use it as an opportunity to build harmony. It's very curious that Japan is, like, split in two in this. At least, until recently. Well, ha ha ha. I suppose it's natural, it's natural for rare spiritium to become a source of disputes. 
Who could have predicted that a spirit field of rare spiritium would be found in the earth below the glass sea? AU Japan did a soil analysis first, discovering that a vast spirit field existed there, but they concealed that information and effectively prevented the soil analysis by CEU Japan. AOU Japan says the announcement was merely delayed, and that they hadn't intended to conceal anything, but CEU strongly suspects that they were trying to keep the spirit fields all for themselves. CEU Japan claims that the glass sea was divided in half, so the western half belongs to them, but AEU Japan claims that the glass sea is a neutral zone, managed by both countries. CEU Japan has suggested that they might station border guards in that area, so it seems unlikely that the glass sea of Japan will escape becoming another disputed territory. Black suited men, okay. Your Excellency, we've received a report from our CEU Japanese comrades that the stationing of border guards will take place in 48 hours. Oh, it's Sasha again. Fuck me, she's the best. I was looking forward to seeing more first. She seemed kind of... I don't know, she's a mis very, very mysterious character. Not just going by, by her design alone. Everything's proceeding smoothly. Even though they lost almost all their pieces in the big war, they've managed to scrape together this much in just over a century. I must admit I'm impressed. We also have reports that there are pawns hidden in countries around the world have all started taking action at once. Are they fighting against uh, the Illuminati? Against the kings? Is she the good girl in this? Or is she evil and the kings are actually good? I don't know. Are you sure we shouldn't make our move? Nah, it'll be fine. If half or so of the world gets destroyed, that's probably just what humanity needs about now. I can't say she seems to be the good girl anymore. Civilization is a unicycle that humanity is constantly riding. If they stop, they fall. So they have to keep on moving. The only problem is that civilization has an end. When you reach that end, they will definitely come. It'll be a festival, a harvest festa. Everything will be reaped without even a single husk left behind. It'll all be pulled up by the roots. Compared to that, World War IV will be far more humane. If you just rewind the world civilization a little, the end of civilization will be that much further away. And weapons of mass destruction have already been eradicated. See? Nothing to worry about at all. <laughs> we have new information about the Atlanta Spirit Field issue in the Atlantic. The AU American government has made a statement that the ACR, which currently has a unilateral military presence in that area, must withdraw the warship Atlantis of the ACR Combined Navy from the Spirit Field within two weeks. If they do not, the AU American Navy will dispatch the Atlantic fleet to that location. They demanded that the ACR withdraw a single ship. It's a classified as a warship, but the Atlantis is a Super Fortress class segmented warship, an ocean fortress made of seven massive linked warships. It's also a symbol of the occupation of the Atlantis spirit field, so it's hard to imagine the ACR going along with this. Another news item just in. The ACR royal family referencing 12 murders including that of former Prime Minister Satan has demanded the return of Supreme Chancellor Bellumi of the Liberal Democratic Party African Liberation Front who is currently receiving political asylum in COU Madagascar. It is unlikely that the COU will respond to this demand and many think this will further complicate the Mozambique Channel issue which concerns the heating up of travel restrictions through the area near the Lemurian Spirit Field. And now for our next item. Just now, despite repeated requests from the ABN Oracle Department to desist, the Seventh State Alliance in Western ABN Ukraine has started holding a national referendum on whether to seek admission into AUU Russia. The AUU Russian military is concentrated on their border and has hinted that they might enter as part of a humanitarian operation to protect citizens of Russian descent, if the worst were to happen. Of course, the ABN Peace Department has objected vehemently to this. It's suspected that, behind the scenes, complicated religious issues that have been forcibly silenced are at play here. This powder keg may have been lit last month when several VIPs of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church were arrested. Meanwhile, on the internet, theories that all these international tensions are being fueled by a Lato international conspiracy have begun, have been gaining steam. Yeah, again, the only ones not sending anyone to this festival? Hmm... 
It's a conspiracy by the countries of Latu, trying to get the other four factions to take each other out. The four factions must maintain their self-restraint and calmly deal with these issues. Now is the time for peace and coexistence. The anti-pacifist Latu must be annihilated. <laughs> wow. The time for peace and coexistence. Next sentence. They must be annihilated. <laughs> That's some real mental gymnastics here, but you see the same kind of shit happening right now in the real world, so it's not that far-fetched. Latu must stop monopolizing Resperitz in field and share them with the whole world. Well, Latu, the world's greatest supplier of Resperitzium, is periodically set up as the villain of international conspiracies. In particular, old major countries who look down on nations affiliated with Latu in the B3W era are rumored to be unsatisfied with Latu's international leadership in AEW3 society, even to the point of jealousy. It seems the military tensions springing up across the world will affect all factions, even Latu. Senor military official. This has been quite a day. It's just one bit of unsettling news after another. As if you didn't know about all these things beforehand, your excellency. Man, his watch is fucking huge. Also, is that a gun I spot in Toshiro's belt or is he... I don't know what that is otherwise. In the highest class private room of a resort hotel, an old pachi military official and Toshiro was sharing a meal. Where's... Where's what's her, what's her name? The good looking Lato girl, not Mary Carmen. God, why can I only remember Mary Carmen's name? <laughs> there were MPs in the four corners of the room, all staring at Toshiro. Humans are despicable creatures after all. The feeling of superiority we get from si we get simply from knowing things a bit sooner than the general public makes a good drink that much more delicious. <laughs> If we keep this up and dash straight into World War 4, that ought to sober them up. Ha ha ha! No one wants that. This moderate sort of tension sometimes spills during peacetime, but whenever it does, they beautifully make up and give the world's news a good story with a nice moral. Everyone wants a scenario like that to play out. And that's what will happen this time too. But what if it won't this time? What if... The powder keg just fucking explodes into her goddamn faces, leaving them scarred. Not even for life, since her life will be over in an instant. After all, unless you give humans some tension every now and then, they start to forget how precious peace is. They also forget how grateful they are to the people who've protected that peace. Exactly. After all, this spurt of international tension will make for an excellent chance to show off the true purpose of militaries and related institutions whose job has become nothing more than earning medals and battle standard festivals under the noble guise of being servants of peace. Humans are foolish creatures, respect proactive occupations, but show absolutely no respect for reactive ones. Though militaries were hailed as guardians supporting the walls of peace, their budgets had started, budgets had started to decline everywhere in recent years. After all, national borders had been maintained thanks to a healthy military balance, and they were now wonderfully stable. Not only that, but once the newest type of weapon, the gauntlet, was made ready for practical use, a few thousand suitable youths would be able to replace millions of soldiers. In the end, militaries around the world would probably be dismantled. I guess the old people don't like that. Is this a game that's just going boomer versus sumo or something? This development was hardly amusing for old men with vested interests in the military's upper echelons, as well as high-ranking men in active service who wanted their spots. If only we had an upswing of military tensions, giving me a chance to shine. A lot of military men were thinking that way. It's just like how there's never been an exterminator who wants all bugs to go extinct. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get that. However, there were quite a few old men who didn't care about the future, who were more interested in how much easy money they could make now. That's just retarded though if the world is gonna end tomorrow. If you make 5 million today, what's gonna get that? What's gonna, you know, what what are you gonna buy today for 5 million when tomorrow the world is ending? By the time all militaries were dissolved, they would long, they would be long retired. Why should they care what happened after that? To them, these global military tensions, which were building after such a long time, would be their last festival and a chance to rake in the dough. The military official rose to his feet and gazed through the window at a well-lit pool under the night sky. Tojiro, I hear you're a fairly well-known broker in this arena. One of my friends in the Department of Defense says he's made a killing thanks to you. 
Oh? I wonder who that friend might be. When doing business with me, being loose-lipped is against the rules. No, no. Which means there are several of them in there, because otherwise he would know who it is, right? No, no. His lips were indeed tightly sealed. And I can guarantee you that he'll never speak of you again as long as he lives. Have no fear, Tojutu. I see. So that's why he never responds when I ask him to go out for a drink. Tojiro, I'm not a small fry like him. I have power. I have no shortage of strong cards to play. And with those cards, I can help you earn even more. Would you mind showing me those cards? I've never shown my cards to anyone who hasn't brought me a sack of money. But you're different, Tojiro. Very well, as an apology for inviting you here so abruptly, I'll show you. The military official signaled to an MP with his chin. You've got mail, Poyo. It's got an attached file, Poyo. An email had been sent to Tojiro's cellcom. He quickly checked the attached file. Is it a picture of the of the uh, UA virus? <laughs> God, that would be funny. In it was a record of a top secret meeting at the IPMA, the International Peace Mediation Association. It showed that they had decided to take a wait-and-see approach, practically speaking, regarding the foods that had popped up simultaneously all over the world. The digital signature was good. This was real. It wasn't exactly surprising. Considering this man's position and connections, it shouldn't have been impossible for him to get his hands on this. This card's not bad, Your Excellency. These files were surely precious things, capable of predicting the future state of the world. The cards I have are really nothing special. I hear you have some very nice cards yourself, and that you have all sorts from all over the globe. Compared to your cards, mine are little more than a parking pass. Gahahaha, <laughs> I want to be your new friend. Or are you thinking that I wouldn't be useful to your business? The plump military official held out his big, greasy hand for a handshake. Toshiro chuckled and grasped the man's hand. You wouldn't notice unless you look closely, but this was a slightly unique handshake, with a peculiar arrangement of fingers. Oh god, they are part of the Illuminati as well. I'm glad to have formed an amicable relationship with you. Now that you've joined forces with me, I promise to make sure you rake in the dough. And I promise to earn you even more. Or rather, if I didn't, I'd get the feeling I'd be footing the bill for my stay here. Hey, Toshiro. As your new friend, and since we're exchanging business cards, could I ask you to reveal just one tiny card of yours? The military official suddenly smirked impishly. It was the sort of unpleasant familiarity often used by people who don't really want to be called friends. In that case, to celebrate my new friendship with your excellency, here's your card. Do you have stock in any environmental ADMS related companies? Of course. Stock in ADMS companies is like a goose that always lays safe golden eggs. You may want to sell that off, bit by bit. Why? Well, now, that would be a different card, Your Excellency. <laughs> hmm. You aren't testing me, are you? Not at all. If you really do trust me, then you had better do as I say. If environmental ADMS were to run into some kind of trouble, the whole world would go back to its nanomachine allergy of a century past. When that happens, it will already be too late. I, I understand, Tojiro. I'll take this friend's warning to heart. Uh, First Lieutenant Valentina. Valentina, that's a name. Even though it's such a beautiful name, how could I forget it? I'm right here. Tojiro is my friend. Tell the public safety office that they may remove the mark on him. You may leave. As you wish, Your Excellency. Valentina saluted and left the room. As she walked through the hall, Hikazuna told her that a friend had sent her a message. You've received a message from friend Marie Carmen, Boyo. Did you see the news? It looks like all cra kinds of crazy things are happening all over the world. I even got a notification saying that I might get caught up in some kind of conspiracy, so I needed to be extra careful of anything suspicious. Seriously, what'll I do if war really does break out? I only became a gauntlet knight because I wanted to fly. I don't want a war. Seriously. <laughs> Opening text editor, Puyo. <laughs> don't be silly. Of course there won't be a war. No one wants war. 
They're all just amusing themselves with the situation that smells like war. It's just like how you enjoy being scared of ghosts every year during Halloween. Message sent to Mary Carmen. Who are you? Oh, it's not gonna be like that. They're all gonna eat their fucking words. Just wait. They're baking that cake and they'll have to eat it. He became a soldier because he wanted to fly. Monsters all over the world are wriggling in the darkness, trying to start a greed-filled carnival. Only those who predicted the wave and managed to move first will survive and get rich. You became a soldier because you wanted to fly? Fool. That cheap resolve is going to cost you. <laughs> oh god, so she doesn't like her. And she just... Oh god. 